We can now start to see how each of us are collapsing the indeterminate wave of probable futures contained in the fifth dimension into the fourth dimensional line that we are experiencing as time. What if you wanted to go back into your own childhood and visit yourself? We can imagine folding the fourth dimension through the fifth, jumping back through time and space to get there. But what if you wanted to get to the world where, for example, you had created a great invention as a child that by now had made you famous and rich? We can imagine our fourth dimensional selves branching out from our current moment into the fifth dimension. But no matter where you go from here, the great child inventor timeline is not one of the available options in your current version of time. You can't get there from here, no matter how much choice, chance and the actions of others become involved. There are only two ways you could get to that world. One would be to travel back in time, somehow trigger the events that cause you to come up with your invention, then travel forward in the fifth dimension to see one of the possible new worlds that might have resulted. But that would be taking the long way. The shortcut we could take would involve us folding the fifth dimension through the sixth dimension, which allows us to instantly jump from our current position to a different fifth dimensional line. In our description of the fourth dimension, we imagine taking the dimension below and conceiving of it as a single point. The fourth dimension is a line which can join the universe as it was one minute ago to the universe as it is right now. Or in the biggest picture possible, we could say that the fourth dimension is a line which joins the Big Bang to one of the possible endings of our universe. Now as we enter the seventh dimension, we're about to imagine a line which treats the entire sixth dimension as if it were a single point. To do that, we have to imagine all the possible timelines, which could have started from our Big Bang, joined to all the possible endings for our universe, a concept which we often refer to as infinity, and treat them all as a single point. So for us, a point in the seventh dimension would be infinity. All possible timelines, which could have or will have occurred from our Big Bang. When we describe infinity as being a point in the seventh dimension, we're only imagining part of the picture. If we're drawing a seventh dimensional line, we need to be able to imagine what a different point in the seventh dimension is going to be, because that's what our line is going to be joined to. But how can there be anything more than infinity? The answer is there can be other completely different infinities created through initial conditions which are different from our own Big Bang. Different initial conditions will create different universes where the basic physical laws such as gravity or the speed of light are not the same as ours. And the resulting branching timelines from that universe's beginning to all its possible endings will create an infinity which is completely separate from the one which is associated with our own universe. So the line we draw in the seventh dimension will join one of those infinities to another. And as boggling as the magnitude of what we're exploring here might be, if we were to branch off from that seventh dimensional line to draw a line to yet another infinity, we'd then be entering the eighth dimension. As we've explored already, we can jump from one point in any dimension to another simply by folding it through the dimension above. If our ant on the newspaper were a two-dimensional flatlander, then folding his two-dimensional world to the third dimension would allow him to magically disappear from one location and appear in a different one. As we're now imagining the ninth dimension, the same rules would apply. If we were to be able to instantaneously jump from one eighth-dimensional line to another, it would be because we're able to fold through the ninth dimension. Before we discuss the first dimension, we could say that we first started out with dimension zero, which is the geometrical concept of the point. A point indicates a location in a system, and each point is of indeterminate size. The first dimension then takes two of these points and joins them with a line. When we imagined the fourth dimension, it was as if we were treating the entirety of three-dimensional space in a particular state as a single point and drawing a fourth dimensional line to another point representing space as it is in a different state. We often refer to the line we have just drawn as time. Then in the seventh dimension, we treated all of the possible timelines which could be generated from our Big Bang as if this were a single point and imagine drawing a line to a point representing all the possible timelines for a completely different universe. 
Now, as we enter the tenth dimension, we have to imagine all the possible branches for all the possible timelines of all the possible universes and treat that as a single point in the tenth dimension. <laughs> so far, so good. But this is where we hit a roadblock. If we're going to imagine the tenth dimension as continuing the cycle and being a line, then we're going to have to imagine a different point that we can draw that line to. But there's no place left to go. By the time we have imagined all possible timelines for all possible universes as being a single point in the tenth dimension, it appears that our journey is done. In string theory, physicists tell us that superstrings vibrating in the tenth dimension are what create the subatomic particles which make up our universe, and all of the other possible universes as well. In other words, all possibilities are contained within the tenth dimension which would appear to be the concept we have just built for ourselves as we imagined the ten dimensions built one upon another.